Hi, and welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. I'm your host, Matt, and today we've got the first exclusive look at AMD's Radeon R9 380. Let's get down to it. The R9 380 is a rebadged R9 285. While it is based on their latest GCN 1.2 architecture, it's still a three and a half year old card at its core. Like the three and a half year old HD 7950 and the R9 285, the R9 380 is equipped with 1,792 SPUs, 112 TAUs and 32 ROPs making the only improvements that can affect performance the increased clock speeds. The 380's clock speed of 1000 MHz is 9% faster than the 285, but the memory frequency remains the same at 1375 MHz. Unfortunately, the R9 380 suffers the same Achilles heel as the 285 did before it, a 256-bit memory bus. This is trumped by the R9 280 and the HD 7950, which both featured a 384-bit memory bus and a 3GB frame buffer. As a result, despite the increased clock speed, the R9 380 is going to suffer when comparing bandwidth performance. The R9 380 will give you higher fill rates and better compute performance, however you could get all round better performance by overclocking the R9 280. Having said all that, it's time to see exactly what the R9 380 produces in the real world. We'll be benchmarking it at 1080p. Let's see how it performs. In Crisis 3, the 380 produced 41 frames, three frames higher than the 285 and two frames more than the GDX 960. In Battlefield Hardline, we saw the 380 get a smooth 60 frames per second, just one frame more than the R9 285 and four less than the GDX 960. In Dying Light, the 380 gave us 40 frames, the exact same as the R9 285 and two less than the GDX 960. In Grand Theft Auto 5, the 380 produced an average of 56 frames, which was 3 more than the 285, but 5 less than the GDX 960. Finally, in Metro Redux, the 380 gave us 45 frames per second. This was the exact same as the R9 285, and 6 frames slower than the GDX 960. The R9 380 performed much as expected with its only slightly improved hardware. On average, it was just 6% faster than its predecessor, the R9 285, but it can be had for about the same price. For 200 US, it represents pretty good value for gamers on a budget that are looking to play games at 1080p. But if you're looking to play on any higher resolutions, you aren't gonna be able to play the latest AAA titles. Compared to the GDX 960, the R9 380's performance was pretty close, just 5% slower over the five games that we tested. And fittingly, they're at the same price point. Given that the GDX 960 did come out slightly on top, and the fact that it consumes less power, we probably still prefer that card for now. This has been Matt for Hardware Unboxed. Thanks for watching our exclusive first look at the R9 380. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, let me know what you think in the comments, and head over and watch our other R9 300 series videos. See you next time. Yeah.